Hey everybody. So I just wanted to check in about The Ice at the End of the World uh, by John Gertner. I am about 100 pages in and this is a very entertaining read. It's got a lot of glare, sorry. Um, and I'm really glad that I decided to change the original order that I had set out to read these books from before because um, I really needed a break from the kind of intense human stories that were in um, How to Be an Anti-Racist and The Ungrateful Refugee. And so The Ice at the End of the World is just this adventure story. And I mean, it certainly has like some um, involved, thoughtful um, ideas and expressions, but it's much more, um, it's delivered in a really great narrative way. And it's not, it's definitely not um, making me feel deep thoughts and like is, is, emotional things, um, which uh, is great. I mean, I'm not saying it may not be emotional later on in the story, but um, yeah, I'm about a third of the way through. It's about 300 pages. So just wanted to check in and give you that uh, update. Uh, I haven't started any of the other books, but I have decided to order Five Days Gone from indigo because I'm worried that I'm not moving up the list on my library hold fast enough so I'm number six and there's on four copies um so you know I'm still looking at two months before I'm gonna get that book um because the the next four as they come due will go to the first four ahead of me um actually the and then the fifth person will get one. So it could be months before I get this book. So I think I need to order it. And um, I, you know, I was holding out for to see how quickly they come in, but they're not coming in quickly at all. So I will just get my own physical copy and it may take me a couple weeks to get that. So that gives me time to finish this one and read um, the other book, which is over here. No Visible Bruises, which I think will also be a very intense read. And then I'll save Five Days Gone for number six. So that's my book two prize update. Um, it's nice to not be reading two at the same time. So even though I really enjoyed listening to The Ungrateful Refugee, I'm really glad that I can just focus in on reading one book two prize book at a time and then be reading some other fiction um, at the same time. So I'll be back again soon when I um, have finished um, The Ice at the End of the World. Okay, bye. Hi everyone, I wanted to check in with you to wrap up The Ice at the End of the World by John Gertner. So this is a um, true adventure story for the first half of the book. He covers the big explorers who went to Greenland and marked the glacier and created elaborate plans to have these trips over the ice. And um, he covers, you know, what they were able to accomplish and how um, the habitation of Greenland um, developed. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the first half of the book. It was so entertaining. It's also really beautifully designed. So the beginning of each chapter has a photograph. And I love how they integrated the photographs into the book because to me, um, I, I actually really preferred having them like this as the heading for each chapter instead of having like a section in the middle of the book with a whole bunch of photographs and you kind of have to flip back and forth to see related people. Some of the photographs of the explorers are just so uh, interesting. Look at this guy. Fritz Dolf Nansen. I hope I said his name right, I don't know, but yeah. 
Uh, so I really enjoyed that. <clears throat> the second part of the book, um, so takes on more of the science. So you, it's pre it's pretty much post World War Two. As soon as World War Two was over. Uh, the military, the U.S. military, um, started funding um, studies, and on the with the reasoning of setting up a military base and um, observing because of the proximity to Russia and the Cold War. And so, once that section started, I didn't enjoy the book as much because um, it it stopped being about these story, these adventure stories of these individual men and people around them even though some of the men were kind of scan like scoundrels they took advantage of the Inuit they uh yeah were just in general kind of I mean they were people so they were good people in some ways and bad people bad people in other ways but the second half of the book like I said really started delving into the science the um, technology, the development of the technology that would allow studies of Greenland to become what they are today. And I didn't find that part as interesting or as readable as the other. And I think if you're more of a science reader and fascinated by the technology and the evolution of science, then I think you would probably not have a problem at all because I think John Gertner is a really great writer and um, his research was... Um, very well done. He did a really good job of uh, pointing out in different portions the um, the omissions. So, for instance, at one point he says something about how all the scientists were men and there were no women there. And, you know, normally in a book like this, no one would bother to mention that. They wouldn't bother to mention the gender disparity uh, but he did, and he, I thought that was very, um, very telling and important. Um, he, you know, does a great overview of um, how, what Greenland is in terms of its uh, importance for the rising of waters through climate change, um, and how the studies um, are evolving and what that evolution has contributed and to glaciology in general as a as a science so yeah uh you know had some moments of like loving it had some moments of a little bit of boredom but overall it was a really solid book and really well executed so I can't have no idea where this is going to fall in the rankings because I still have two books left to read. And, um, but this is probably, I'm, I'm, my theory right now is that my, um, challenge in the rankings is not going to be who's, what is the best book and what was the, my least favorite book, but where the books that I enjoyed in general are going to fall in the rankings between three to five and you know in that area so yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about that right now as I start um my fifth read hey everybody checking in about no visible bruises I am through part one and uh, this is a really well-written book. Reading it is very smooth. And I think especially when you have difficult subject matter, it really helps to have a book that is well-written. And um, she basically covers one specific domestic abuse and domestic homicide case for the first section of the book takes you into details, introduces you to different experts who are doing work in the field, um, and takes you through the life of this family. And um, it's a tragic story. It's a very heavy subject matter, and it's very a frustrating statistics that you're learning about in the first section. But um, I, I am really 
as much as you can be enjoying reading a book about a, such a such a heavy subject, I am enjoying it. And what I find really interesting about the serendipitous nature of society in general is that I've been seeing so many articles shared on social media regarding domestic violence and domestic abuse while I've been reading this book. And I don't think I noticed them quite as much before as I am noticing them now in reading this. So um, I will check in again. Hi, everybody. So I just finished No Visible Bruises by Rachel Louise Snyder. Um, this is a book about domestic abuse in the United States. And uh, it was very well written. I think that Snyder uh, is a very accomplished writer. She kept the story, a, a story that had a lot of different people in it, uh, a lot of different places, a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different um, case studies, very clear. Um, she didn't put in, she put in information about herself in, again, in a very well constructed way. Um, and the statistics that she reveals in here, the information that she shares in here, so, so, so important for people to understand, um, it was interesting though, because um, I think that this book is so important for Americans to understand, to read, the people who live in the United States. I think that a lot of the scenarios in this book are very specific to culture in the United States. So I don't know, I'm not sure if domestic violence issues in Canada could be compared because of the effect that gun laws in the United States has on domestic violence. And, you know, if you want to learn more about that, I would say, please read this book. But um, there is less access to guns in Canada. And so um, I'm not sure how translatable this information is to our to Canadian um, society based on the fact that the states with the most gun access are also the states with the highest rate of homicide between domestic partners. So, um, yeah, but there's a lot in here. There's a lot of important statistics. There's a lot of important information, if, especially if you have had, um, if you have been around anyone who's experienced domestic violence, uh, you know, these are important things for you to know and understand about how it works. And um, if you have any guilt or, or anything like that, I think that um, reading this book may help you to deal with that. Um, obviously, there are case studies in here. So there are violent dis descriptions of violence and descriptions of um, pain and horrif horrific things. But uh, Snyder shares them in a way that is not um, sensationalized or uh, overdone. She's not sharing. She only shares what you really need to know. And I think the rest of it, um, she just leaves out, rightfully so, because it is such a hard, hard topic. So, I mean, it's not, it's not an easy breezy read, that's for sure. But... Um, you know, this, this is so important to deal with in the wake of where we are in the world with the relationships between men and women. And, and, and as she outlines in this book, it is not just, um, heterosexual relationships that experience violence. She could have potentially included a non-heterosexual example. I think that would have, um, helped to um, 
uh, distill the fact that it's so universal. She says it, but she didn't give an example. And I think that's just because in her research, she was not, she didn't encounter um, um, an LGBTQ uh, relationship that could be included. But I think that would have made this book even better. And this was, uh, this was a great read. It was, uh, I would give this book four stars, four and a half stars. Um, yeah, very well done. So where are we with the reading of book two prize right now? Um, I just, I just finished editing my first vlog that included the first three books, uh, that I finished. And this, uh, is my fifth and I have my sixth book left five days gone. That is the last one. So I'm going to start reading that um, probably tonight or tomorrow. And I'm going to try to get it done a little bit faster than um, than I have. Where are we right now? We are March 13th. So, um, you know, I'm halfway through March. The, the um, ballots are due at the end of March. And I have one book left to read. So I just like to get it done because I would really love to get another some of my other reading <laughs> done for this month. Um, I think I might have I, I do did have some scheduled vacation time, but we have uh, COVID nineteen happening right now, and so our vacation's been canceled. And um, I am going to go into work. I've decided to take less vacation days than I was planning to, but I do want to take some vacation days and I haven't worked out my schedule for next week at all. So hopefully when I figure out what I'm going to do next week, I will have some time off from work and I will be able to do a bit more reading. I would really like to finish um, five days gone fairly quickly and um, I've got, you know, one other book on the go and Oh, sorry, two other books on the go and one other one I was hoping to read this month. So I don't know if it's going to happen, but um, you will be sure to find out. And I will check in again later once I've um, read some of Five Days Gone. Good morning. Uh, I am just over 100 pages into Five Days Gone by Laura Cumming. The um, mystery of my mother's disappearance as a child. Um, hmm, I'm not sure about this yet. I think that um, this is suffering a little bit from a uh, lack of focus. And it's interesting that um, Savage Appetites and this one I would I would compare in that way. Um, the, the point of this story is to share the mystery of her mother disappearing. And what Laura Cumming, her writing is, is quite sentimental. And um, she's very much, you know, looking at the life, what she can piece together of her mother's parents. And um, she's trying to share that with us, but I don't find it that interesting, to be honest. It's, um, it, it, it's kind of something that you would, um, it's kind of something that you would tell in a family story to your kids or to someone who was interested in your family history, but you wouldn't just tell it to anybody because it's not that interesting. She describes a lot of photographs and the photographs are in the text, which in some instances is interesting, but in others is just like a really lengthy description of a photograph that you can see yourself and reading into a lot of it and comparing the compositions to famous paintings and reiterating she reiterates a lot about 
um, her grandparents social class and I I just feel like that's you know it's been done we're a hundred pages in I still don't know the mystery although I feel like I have an idea of what it may have been and I feel like her prolonging of telling us what it is is not really enhancing the story in any way so can't say I'm in love with this right now it started out and I was quite into it but as I've been getting further along I have not found it to be holding my interest very well and um yeah so book six um not sure about it so far so I will check in again um I'm gonna try to finish this this week I would like to get it done and I'll check in again uh, once I have done that Hi everybody, just finished Five Days Gone by Laura Cumming, my sixth and final uh, book in the book two prize for round one. Uh, I didn't love this one. There were parts of it that I found really great. So um, some of the um, imagery of the landscape of Lincolnshire in England was interesting and um, some of the history of the area chapel where um, Laura Cummings mother grew up was interesting uh, T.S. Eliot lived there um, but I just found it way too sentimental for my tastes um, I think it was a great exercise for Laura Cumming to write this book based on her mother's history and her family history, but I don't think that every family history is book worthy. And I just didn't find that this story was that compelling to me. I mean, I certainly feel bad that her mother grew up in, in a place of secrecy and confusion where she didn't know her true origins. And, but, you know, I'm sure there's, there's thousands of children that have grown up in this way and I just didn't feel like I didn't feel that pulled into her story I just you know uh, so it was just so sentimental and you could tell that Laura was so immersed in her family story and loved her mother so much that she wanted to make something to kind of make a testament to her injustice in her life and I felt like that was not just again not something that I found interesting to read so um you know there are some lovely parts there's some interesting times where her mother was an artist so she tries to connect art to her narrative but overall sometimes I was confused by the names there's a lot of people in the town um, sometimes I just was bored by what she was doing and there's a lot of repetition, you know, the same things about her grandfather or her grandfather over and over again. And, and really the way the mystery also was revealed and constructed, I didn't enjoy. She, she didn't really tell you at the beginning what had happened and then waits right to the end in some places to tell you the true story. And I kind of feel like if she would have investigated the story in a different order, then maybe I would have found it more interesting. But it just wasn't, you know, something that I would... And I can't even tell. I think this is a memoir, but it's not her memoir. It's her mom's memoir. Um, yeah, I, I feel like she could have written it with more uh, sympathy for... She does sympathize with everyone, but the characters are very... They're very jaded and shown through um her mother's perspective too much and you just feel this sense of sentimentality like this sense of i love my mom and they were mean to my mom like that's 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 the way it feels the whole way through for me and so i just didn't enjoy that it just didn't like everybody has this in their lives and some people way worse than this and so anyway yeah that's that oh Oh, by the way, this is like just three stars. Maybe two and a half 
actually for me just just yeah I mean 